Hey guys, today we're going to take a closer look at these two scenes. If you haven't seen this explainer video before, I'll leave a link in the description box. So we have the card flip and then another quick transition. Let's first design the cards in Illustrator. I use the grid tool for most elements, first roughly outlining the shape I have in mind and then rounding all the corners where I need to. Sometimes I design just one side and then copy reflect it so that I have perfectly symmetrical element. If we need to stitch two lines together, like in this particular case, we select both anchor points we want to join with the drag selection tool, it's the white arrow on a toolbar, right click, join. Here we go, now it's a whole thing. If we have a hole or a gap, like in this element, and we wish to close it, so we need to continue drawing the line, right? We select the pen tool, then holding ALT, we click at the anchor point where we need to start a new line from, and then click at another anchor point where the line should close. Like this. Perfect. I don't actually remember exactly how I designed the cards, but if I had to redesign them, I'd go this way. It's important just to understand the technique, and then you can design any element, any icon you like. So the heart is basically a reverted spade, just without that leg. And repurposing is a great time saver. I never hesitate to repurpose any element I possibly can. And besides, I think it adds this integrity to design when familiar shapes are used again and again. It also calms my ADHD down a bit. Something like this, good enough. Again, if you need to move some anchor points around, just select them with the direct selection tool and go ahead, mess around with them until you're happy, have fun. Now we have to design the characters. As you can see, their bodies are identical. We only change the hair and facial features. Though it's a bold word for two small circles and one curved line, but nevertheless. Sometimes you guys ask me what kind of style is it, what we are designing now. I honestly have no clue if this style has an official name attached to it. I'd call it a flat, clean vector style if I had to look it up somewhere on Pinterest, for instance, to get some inspiration and reference. If you think that ideas come to me quickly and easily and I always know exactly what to design, that's not the case at all. Having a vision, knowing what you want to create, is way more challenging than knowing which buttons to click. I spend my life on Pinterest, I literally live there. So our guys are simple, flat, neat characters. That means we omit all the details, we only design as much as needed for them to resemble people. And it makes our work so much easier and faster and the whole composition cleaner and nicer. Here again I use the grid tool and the technique I've explained already. The curly hair is a bunch of circles, some of them are united into one shape. The Unite option is in Pathfinder, if you don't see it, make sure the Pathfinder is ticked on, it's under Windows. Then, in this particular project, I added small dark elements here and there. For instance, the shadow is not really that much necessary for the character, since the character is flat and minimalist, but I needed some color contrast, so I decided to draw a little shadow under the chin. And as you can see, the shadow is an occasional element, it just sits where I need a little black spot. Again, when it comes to a t-shirt, I just sketch something that resembles one side of a t-shirt, copy reflect, and then start moving the anchor points with more precision and intention, adding more details as I see fit. The first outline is always just the base from which I work on the element. Okay, let's move to the After Effects. We basically have two transitions here, the card to the guy, which is a card flip, and the guy to his bigger version. Mm -hmm. 
let's go inside the card. All cards are animated in the same way, the only difference is the suit. Hearts, crosses, spades and diamonds. The spade just moves upward smoothly, but we also have here opacity rapidly risen from 0 to 100, right in the beginning from the point where the spade starts to move up. I also like here how the suit and the card itself reveal with equal speed, so it seems like they're really one element, though they're animated differently. Everything is an illusion, isn't it? As for the card, we have to make the element editable first. To do this, right-click on the layer, then select Create, Create Shapes from Vector Layers. I actually have a separate tutorial and also a short where I explain this simple technique. Basically, I start with typing the word path in a search bar. And as you can see, it finds us various paths inside the layer. I'm not being picky here, I just keyframe them all to save time. Step two, I go some frames back, doesn't matter how many frames, we can move the keyframes around later, and I select the anchor points with the selection tool right at the element. We only select the anchor points we want to move, we don't select the entire element, okay? And step three, most obvious one, we move our selection. I do this with arrows on my keyboard because I always end up fucking up my selection when I work with my mouse. At the end of this manipulation, you'll notice additional keyframes were automatically added when you move the anchor points. But they're only added to some paths, not to all of them, so we can just delete the initial keyframes from the path that were not involved. I hope what I say makes at least some kind of sense, and you guys got the point. If not, no stress, I explain this in almost every single tutorial I make. One day I will find a way to your soul. The first little transition is a simple card flip. I also have a tutorial where I explain perhaps a bit more in detail how it's done. <laughs> you know where to find the link. Here are the card and its two different covers, which are the suit and the character, rotate along y-axis. Don't forget to toggle on the 3D. We only animate the card here because both covers are parented to the card, so when they move, they move with one smooth motion, like they're glued together, like they're one element. This is step one. And step two, the cover which is underneath, in this case the suit, the spades, has to end, has to crop right where the card is rotated 90 degrees. And the top cover, which is character in our case, should appear. Why? Because at 90 degrees the card is almost invisible. We only see its edge and it's always a perfect place for a transition. So here we quickly switch the covers. You may think that this is quite rough, but if it happens quickly you don't really notice any roughness. Let's see how the other transition happens. The idea here is close to the flip card. We also switch the layers in the middle of the motion, but since this transition is a bit longer in time, we should prep the layers a bit more carefully. The motion starts with the bottom layer and then stops when the layers are switched, so with the top layer. The whole movement is about 15 frames in this particular transition and obviously it will vary from project to project. So we keyframe the beginning of the motion and the end of it. Respectfully, we keyframe the parameters on the bottom layer and then the top layer. Which parameters should we keyframe, you may ask? The ones that you clearly see changing. In this case, the character ends up being bigger, so we keyframe the scale. And it tilts slightly, so we keyframe the rotation. And then we just try to align the beginning and the end as smoothly as we can. The opacity is something I add keyframes to by default, because this is how we do our crop. Sometimes it looks good when one layer smoothly fades into another within three, four, five frames. Sometimes the rough cut of just one frame works as well. Fun fact, the first version of this transition was pretty rough and the client had asked me to make it smoother. I personally like the rough cuts, because here all the elements are so exaggerated, taking to the extreme that sometimes I don't think it's worth adding more realism to the way they move, you know what I mean? Definitely it's not applicable to all styles, but when it comes to geometric, flat, minimalist design, it kind of makes sense to me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Okay, we're done, finally, let's take a look. I hope this tutorial was useful, if so, give this video a like, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!